Hey folks, Scott from Country Roads Fly. Thanks for joining me here at the bench for another edition of Rap by Rap. Today we're going to tackle the Wally Wing technique to create realistic looking mayfly wings. It's a relatively simple technique, although it does have some drawbacks, which we'll talk about. So let's dive right into it. So I've got my thread secured to the hook shank here and positioned at the wing tie-in point, about two to three hook eye widths behind the eye itself. The material we'll use for the wings is a single mallard flank feather, like this. But before I mount the feather to the hook, we'll need to do some prep work to the feather itself. I'm going to separate some of the feather tip fibers from the ones towards the base of the feather by preening back some of the feather hackles from the tip. just an even amount of fibers on each side of the stem. So what's remaining is this tip of the feather and then these barbs towards the other end will ultimately become our wings. You can see here, as I preen these feather barbs towards the base and keep compression on them, they form kind of an oval shape and that's what we're going for. So I can either do this with just my fingers to hold that shape while I tie it into the hook, or I can use a tool to help out a little bit. And a tool that's commonly used is a nozzle such as this. Whenever you buy UV resin or some other tying liquids, they usually come with nozzles of various diameters. So if you're like me, only one nozzle ever gets used for the liquid and the others accumulate in your tying bench drawer. So this is a great way to make use of these spare nozzles. So to prepare this feather for mounting on the hook shank, I'm going to use the nozzle and I'm going to feed through it the tip of my feather, feed it through the hole with the base of the nozzle, the big hole, such that it comes through the other end through the small hole. Then I'm going to grab the tip of the feather and just pull it through. And I'm going to use the nozzle to maintain the shape that I want for this wing. So now with the assistance of the nozzle, I can hold the material against the hook shank to size it. And I want these wings to be just about a hook shank length and height. And that looks pretty good. So I've got my wing material sized and I'm ready to mount it to the hook shank. So now that I've got the material sized the way I want, it's simply a matter of using the nozzle to position the material over the established wing mounting position where my thread is waiting for me. And simply take a single wrap of thread to secure the material to the shank. Then I'm just gonna slowly move the nozzle rearward to expose more of the wing material and make some subsequent adjacent wraps going rearward. And note here that the wing, when I mounted it to the hook shank, the dull side is facing upward. So the wing is sloping upwards at this point. So once I'm happy and confident that the wing is properly secured to the hook shank, I'm going to lift up on the nozzle and the feather butts and trim off the excess. And then bind down any remaining butts and form a bit of a taper. So with the wing material now secure, I'm going to advance the thread to in front of the wings and I can grab the tip of the wing material to lift up as I make a wrap in front of the wing material. Now I'm going to use my thumb to press against the front of the wing material. I'm going to press it rearward so that it orients the material vertically. Like that. While lifting up on the wing tip, I'm going to build a bit of a 
a thread ramp in front of the wing material just to help them maintain that vertical orientation. So now we're ready to separate our wing material and create two distinct wings. We're going to start by isolating the two bottom feather barbs on the tip section of the wing. I'm going to grab those two between the thumb and index finger of my dominant hand, my right hand. And I'm also going to grab the remaining section of feather tip between the thumb and index finger of my left hand. And then with my right hand, I'm gently going to pull on those two barbels such that it peels away from the stem and taking the barbs from the base of the feather with it down to the base where it meets the hook shank. And as you can see, that's created a nicely shaped mayfly wing. So then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to take the two bottommost barbels from the tip section between the thumb and index finger on my left hand. And then I'm going to grab the other tip barbs between the thumb and index finger of my right hand. And with my left hand, gently pull those two barbs separating from the stem all the way down to the hook shank, like so. So there we've got our divided Wally wings. And from here, it's just a matter of cleaning up the excess. I'm going to take my tweezers and grab the two barbs on the near side and clip off the excess. These are the barbs that we pulled away from the stem. The same for the other side. Then I'm going to grab this center section of stem, the main stem. Run my scissors all the way down to the base of it. And clip that off. And there we have our Wally Wings. So that's about all there is to it for Wally Wings. It's a pretty simple technique. You do it a couple times and you're an expert. As you can see, they make really nice, realistic looking Mayfly Wings. However, they do have some drawbacks. They tend to create a bit of drag as you cast. So if you're making long casts with a fast action rod, for example, and you're generating a lot of line speed, you may find that Wally Wing Flies are causing your tippet to twist. So just be aware of that. But if you're like me and you use slow action rods and rarely make casts longer than 30 feet or so, then there's usually no problem. So I hope this video has been helpful and it inspires you to try your hand at Wally Wings. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.